Okay, so I'm gonna rest my arm here so it doesn't. Hang on a second. Let's get the shirt right. Get this right. Okay. So we're back in a very dirty car. Uh, back in LA, I uh, wanted to talk to you guys about resilient dogs. So I was gonna write a post and then I was like, ah, I haven't shot a video like this in a while. I think since I was here last time in LA about uh, intention and how to, how to own a walk and how to ensure or to best ensure that you had a best chance of success on a walk, um, both with other people and dogs approaching you and things like that. So I figured I'd shoot a video. So, resilient dogs. I've been thinking about this a lot and I've had a lot of my own dogs and then I've seen a gazillion client dogs. And one of the things I've noticed that I don't think it's talked about is that resilient dogs, which is I think just another way of saying dogs with really strong genetics, really strong just personality. I, I don't have the biological background to go into what all the components might be that make it up. I just know from what I've seen that I've seen dogs that have come from very negative situations, uh, situations that should cause them to be a wreck, should cause them to be a mess, should cause them to be scared of everything, should cause them to be flighty and sketchy and worried, um, but they're not. They're, they, they easily adapt, they easily adjust, they, they uh, acclimate to situations quickly, they acclimate to people and new environments and things like that quickly, and, and it just, it's kind of dawned on me that, and while this might not be any groundbreaking insight, um, I'm sure anybody who works with dogs regularly has seen some component of this, but I, don't, I haven't heard it really articulated really clearly, and, and it's just that resilient dogs, which brings us to the opposite, dogs that aren't resilient, um, which we'll get to in a second, but resilient dogs, yes, you can train dogs to be better, right? And, and there's a whole spectrum of like how challenged they are to how stable they are. And then how much the training can do along those lines really depends on the training and then depends on what the dog has going on, what the dog's got cooking internally. Um, resilient dogs tend to just manage to bounce back from things that you would typically think they shouldn't bounce back from. My girl, Belle, um, I don't know her total history, but she was found on the side of a freeway, um, jumping lane, jumping the center divider, fairly emaciated, covered in mud and muck, and in, a, in an area that was just like not a great area. It was like a truck and train yard, and, 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 and she was six months to a year old. Yet she was the most stable, best golden dog that I'd ever seen. And not only smart, quick, quick to learn, able to do, able to jump tall buildings in a single bound, all that stuff, but also perfect with other dogs. Perfect with people. Perfect in any situation, didn't matter where I brought her into. Junior, my other dog I got at six months from the pound, don't know his story, don't know where he came from, don't know anything about him. I remember his first walk, took him out, he's chow mix, already like you could see had a little swagger. And uh, I remember walking him down Ventura Boulevard or to Ventura Boulevard in Sherman Oaks, which is a very, very busy street, one of the busiest streets in the valley. And he was six months and a bus came like just rumbling by. <laughs> And I remember watching him and he went, and he stood back from it for a second. And we've all seen dogs get nervous and like have major reactions to, to things, you know, like a, like a rumbling bus or a trash truck. And he didn't have a major reaction. He was like, you could tell, he didn't know what to make of it. He went like this, maybe not quite like that. Probably more like 
something along those lines. And then he watched it, took it in, and he never had an issue again. A bus never bothered him again. Whereas I've worked with dogs that have got issues with all sorts of different triggers, all sorts of different things that bother, worry, concern, freak them out, overwhelm them. And you make tiny, tiny little improvements and you get them a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better, or you get them a lot better. It really depends on the dog. But my point is not just to point out my two dogs, which it's, impor it's important because that's just stuff I've, I've seen and lived with and, and watched them over a long course of time. And Junior was basically bomb proof. There was just nothing that bothered him. Got him from the shelter, six months old, who knew what he did for his first six months of his life? Who knew what Belle did for her first six months to a year of her life? I don't know, but they were resilient dogs. And beyond training them to be anything, they were just fundamentally resilient. And then you get dogs that are fundamentally not resilient. They're far more fragile in how they're put together. Whatever's going on, with, with, with the mind, with the, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know how to break down all the different components, all the different pieces that could go into making a dog not be resilient. I just don't have that background. All I can do is, is tell you from observation what I've seen. And we see dogs, like I said, all across that spectrum. And so you'll find dogs that are fragile and it just is who they are and it's not about almost never i'm not gonna say never but almost never is it about the dogs having abusive situations i'm, I'm not precluding abuse i'm just saying it's so it's been so overplayed so overblown anytime a dog does anything where it's where, where it cowers or does something to a specific situation somebody's always like it, it, it's just human nature. The logical conclusion is they must be afraid of that because that must have done something bad to them in the past. My belief is that that's not the case. My belief is that, even with our dog Billy, um, Australian cattle dog, <clears throat> we got her very young, know her breeder, watched her grow up as a pup. Her breeder was super awesome, lots of videos, and Billy is nervous and, and sketchy about certain things. And she had no negative experiences with any of these things that she's worried about. She's less resilient than Junior or Belle. And so we've got a genetic thing going on. We've got something going on genetically within her that creates that. Now, she's not a mess or wreck. She's a blast. She's fun. She's smart. She's, you know, she's great. But compared to Junior or Belle, she's definitely much more on the nervous, unsure, uncertain, spooked side. How do I, what's the best way? Suspicious, that's the best way to put it, suspicious side. And some of it is going to be in, 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 in her, her breeding and her bloodlines and things like that um, to be maybe possibly more territorial, but you can tell the difference between like confident territorial behavior and like, what the hell was that? Everything's worrisome, everything's, you know, problematic. Um, also, my dog Oakley, who I got at, at like six to eight months, once again, from the same shelter that, I, that we got Junior from, he was always a little bit disconnected, always kind of in his own place, um, and then ended up being incredibly dog aggressive, tons of separation anxiety, and tons of leash reactivity. Now, does that mean that he was less resilient? When I first saw him at the, and I'm, I'm really like going down a whole rabbit hole here sharing stuff, but when I first met him, he was in a uh, in the same shelter and he was with an adult uh, dog that was, anytime somebody would go by, would attack him. So did he get imprinted early with a, being attacked and so thus developed a sense of not trusting other dogs? That's kind of my theory on it. Um, <clears throat> but he also had, separation anxiety. So what's the explanation for that? Um, is leash reactivity, you could connect to dog stuff and things like that. But also there was just always something a little bit different with him. And it just was who he was. He was less resilient than Junior or Belle. 
and you could say maybe less stable. You could put it a lot of different ways. But anyways, I just think it's an important thing to, to, to contemplate for owners out there, for trainers, because we, we tend to put a lot of pressure on ourselves to make magic happen, to to think that we can fix every dog, and, and I think that's a crazy notion. Um, but owners as well who are uh, applying stories to their dog's behavior. This is why this is happening because we have such a deep need to have like an, a, a story that makes sense for why a behavior is happening. Um, most likely, most likely, like I said, there are exceptions. There are dogs that have been abused and had horrible situations, but there are dogs that have been abused and had horrible situations and absolutely bounce back and you see no residual effects. There are dogs that are, I would say, fragile less resilient that go through those experiences and never completely bounce back. And then you have dogs that don't go through anything negative in a, in a true kind of like abusive sense. They just are not as resilient and so life itself overwhelms them and then that goes to varying degrees. Like I, like I said, like Billy, you know, she's on the low end of it, but that's there. She's less resilient. Um, even though nothing negative has happened to her. So it's mainly just a conversation to get people thinking about this kind of like built-in genetic resiliency, personality. It's probably a combination of, well, those are probably one and the same in, in some sense, but to get people to understand or think about resilient dogs that go through even horrific stuff, they seem to bounce back and have no problems. Um, I've seen plenty of dogs that have come through that we've trained that have absolutely like documented bad stories and they're great, they're amazing, they're awesome. Um, like really fantastic dogs that have got shitty fucking stories. Then dogs that have had shitty fucking stories that don't bounce back, that absolutely just, you can just, they were likely that bad combination of a less resilient dog and then meeting up with a situation that wasn't good. So you, you see what I'm saying? And so it spans the spectrum from just nothing bad happening and being not resilient and struggling in life to actually being not resilient and something bad happening to and exceptionally struggling. And then you have being very resilient and having bad things happen bouncing right back and having no problems with it and being exceptionally resilient, having nothing bad, and of course just having a skip in your step because if you're resilient and nothing bad's happened, then you got no reason to have a problem. So it's just something to think about. It's something to think about when you're training and you see a dog that you're working with and you're struggling to make the progress that you would like to make, most likely you've got a genetic issue on your hands that's creating a certain ceiling of progress of what you can get to. Who knows how far you can get? You should always keep pushing, but it should definitely check you in, clue you in about, hmm, maybe, we're, maybe we've actually got a genetic ceiling here. Maybe we have a dog that's not necessarily been abused, but is just not a resilient dog. Um, and same thing goes for owners. So you don't put yourself through this emotional ringer of feeling like you haven't done enough um, or that you're not taking good enough care of your dog or whatever it might be. Um, my feeling is that pretty much no matter what, resilient dogs do well. I, and this might be controversial, but I think resilient dogs, no matter what they encounter, they pretty much bounce back and do well. Dogs that far somewhere, fall somewhere else on the resiliency scale, less so, less so, less so, less so, less so. And um, I just think that's an important conversation to be had and an important conversation and idea for people to think about so they can stop thinking about every dog can be fixed, every dog can be back to normal, as if normal ever existed as one singular defined concept. So as we've just discussed here, it has a wide range just from birth. So anyways, something to think about. Let me know what you think about in the comments and um, I'm off to the gym. I'll talk to you guys soon. Hope you're well. Hopefully, hopefully this stimulated some thought and uh, maybe even made some of you guys feel better about your situation.